Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. It looks like Canelo Alvarez may have ruined Golovkin's May 5th chance at a fight. Stay tuned. What up, fight world? It's your boy Ego and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We working. Wow, what a roller coaster this has been. Canelo Alvarez in February failed two drug tests for the same substance, clenbuterol, February 17th and 20th. Then a couple weeks passed, then it was revealed Canelo was temporarily suspended, had a hearing April 10th, then they pushed it back to April 18th. We're still waiting on that date. And Golovkin and team have been scrambling, trying to find an opponent. And it looks like they were talking about having this fight, obviously Canelo versus Golovkin on HBO pay-per-view. Then they were gonna demote it to regular HBO. They were gonna take it out of the T-Mobile arena. They were gonna put it in the MGM. And then they decided, you know what? Golovkin's based out of California now. That's where he lives, he trains in Big Bear. So we should move him to SoCal, right? And have him fight in Carson at the StubHub Center. Smaller venue, you know what I mean? Puts on action fights. But the thing is, they're claiming that they, they can't find an opponent. Now, the Nevada State Athletic Commission, they refused an opponent. They did not approve an opponent. Jaime Munguia, who's undefeated puncher from Tijuana, probably because he came from the lower weight classes. He's only 21 years old, and they don't want to sanction a fight with the silver medalist with way more pro level experience, way more amateur experience, and a guy who's so unproven, you know what I mean, and came from a lower weight class. And the only reason he came into play is because he's undefeated and he's Mexican and it's on Cinco de Mayo weekend. So I guess they, they figured that they'd be able to capitalize on that avenue and that angle, which doesn't make sense to me because even though it's Cinco de Mayo and the festivities and stuff, fans are still boxing fans. They don't want to just see you fight any, like any Mexican will do, any random Mexican. If it's Gilberto Zudo Ramirez or a name they're familiar with, then yeah, they'll check it out. Then... They were saying Vanis Matarosin, 154 pounder, and that got, did not get approved. It got overruled for California State Athletic Commission, or actually, I think the sanctioning bodies, the belts, WBC, and the belts that are owned by Golovkin and the WBA, they had a conference call and they said, nah, you can't fight 154 pounder to appease your duty as a champion. You know what I mean? And now it's looking like the whole fight might get canceled. They, were, they had an opponent like Gary Spike O'Sullivan, who is kind of on standby, wants to fight. But I'm sure K2, Tom Loeffler, Triple G, Abel, I'm sure that they've gotten word that that's not really a fight people believe in. That's going to do horrible. I told you that. Especially if they charge HBO pay-per-view, that would be one of the worst look. You know what I mean? You thought Crawford versus Postal. That was actually a good fight. And it didn't do great pay-per-view by so. That would be a horrible um, pay-per-view situation. So even if you put on regular HBO, um, no offense to Gary Spike O'Sullivan, he come, comes off the Antoine Douglas win, but he's from Ireland, hasn't established his brand in America. Um, no one really knows him, and he has two losses, one to Chris Eubank Jr., and then also a loss to Billy Joe Saunders. So I don't really think the fanfare would be there, even in terms of ticket sales. People don't want to see fighters typically regress too much Golovkin he fought Kell Brook a talented welterweight then he fought Danny Jacobs I was at that fight great fight um narrowly escaped with the victory then he fought Canelo which was obviously a good fight lucrative fight I was at that fight and then to go and fight a Jaime Munguia 154 pound Vanis Matarosin or even Gary Spike O'Sullivan whose best win I guess is Antoine Douglas Right, a guy who's been stopped already by Aventel Curtice a couple years ago. It just is, is looking like a disaster. So now they might cancel it altogether, which is great news to me. Uh, no shade to Golovkin. Initially, this happening is not his fault. It's not his doing. This is Canelo. So you have to blame Canelo. He's the one with something in his system. However, it got there. You know what I mean? He says it's tainted meat. A lot of people suspect foul play or something other. But you can't blame Golovkin for that. But I told you. My honest opinion is Canelo had failed a drug test far before 
Golovkin did that interview with ESPN and he absolutely went in. I remember the day everybody, my phone was blowing up and people on Instagram were tagging me in it and sending me the links and stuff. And he blew up and he accused Canelo of being dirty. Three days, at, I counted. It was like two or three days later, the Nevada State Athletic Commission says Canelo's temporarily suspended. They The whole three weeks when he failed the drug test, immediately after Golden Boy released a press release stating that he had failed a drug test with Clint Buterall, we didn't hear shit from the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Golovkin does that interview, brings attention and focus to it, right? And then all of a sudden, you, you hear about him getting suspended and I just think the Nevada State Athletic Commission, their hand was forced. There was just too much attention on Canelo failing and they had to do the right thing, which is likely fine and suspend him on April 18th. And then Canelo bowed out before that, that April 18th and said, I'm not going to be competing. They have very little time to promote. HBO hasn't been promoting Golovkin versus anybody for the last few telecasts because they didn't know the outcome. They didn't promote or having a, a named opponent. It's just so little time. I, I told you guys on Twitter, you guys got to follow. This is this is why Ego's Army is important to this game right now because we predict a lot of this stuff. I told you on Twitter and I made a video about it and I'm like, man, it's less than a month away and we haven't had an official announcement from Golovkin's page or anything about who he's fighting. That's not a good sign because aside from just the official announcement so fans can go with that official announcement soon after that is ticket sales so he's gonna fight a subpar opponent that people don't want to see him fight and Jaime Munguia, Vanis Matarosin who's been very inactive and is a 154 pounder or Gary Spike O'Sullivan on top of that you're giving yourself very little time to promote it you know what I mean on top of it not being a good promotion um, time frame window so I told you I, 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 I th I'd prefer to see this fight get cancelled and you know what Golovkin's team deserves some of the blame not not for Canelo failing the drug test just hear me out they deserve some of the blame for this I fucking told you guys I told you guys I told you guys I told you guys what I mean is I told you I'm not a fan of fighters basing their whole career path on the move of one guy you know what i mean even the whole five years mayweather and pacquiao didn't fight each other which we all wanted to see they were at least fighting you know what i mean floyd fought whoever Cotto, robert guerrero canelo you know what i mean pacquiao was fighting shane mosley and whoever else he fought ricky hatton he was fighting so they were doing their own thing at least you know what i mean golovkin used to fight three to four times a year and then over the last 18 months or so he's allowed himself and his team to chase canelo canelo had him they did a meeting in december 2015 that they were going to take voluntary defenses of their titles and then they would meet up in their next fight canelo chose amir khan for whatever reason knocked him out and then a month after or a month before or whatever uh golovkin fought dominic wade knocked him out in two rounds I went to both both of those events and after Canelo said oh I'm, I'm getting sued I got court dates here's the belt I'm not dealing with this right now and everyone gave Canelo shit and he later fought Liam Smith and this whole time Golovkin has been him and his team have been at Golden Boy and, and Team Canelo's mercy and I told him this was not like I told you guys my thoughts on this situation not i told him like i told him directly but i told you like why are you chasing canelo like if you don't want to fight that's cool put some pressure on him but you still got to keep it moving and golovkin's team they allow golden boy to stagnate their plans all the while golovkin just turned 36 so he's not getting any younger in this brutal sport canelo is still pretty young he, canelo's young enough where he can take a six month suspension and come back and still be still young you know what i mean it's not like he he won't even be 30 if he does a six month suspension he's like 27 28 or something like that meanwhile golovkin's 36 sitting on the shelf with a, a style in which it's probably better if he stays active he puts a lot of pressure on you very good offense stuff like that good jab and he's just been chasing canelo chasing canelo even when he had an opportunity after the danny jacobs fight to fight for undisputed he could have he could have fought billy joe saunders and billy joe saunders at this point was like yeah i'm down let's fight let's fight i got me pinned 
I want a couple fingers me way, but I got me pinned. And he was trying to badmouth Golovkin because a lot of people thought that he ducked, which he did. You know what I mean? Duck Golovkin didn't really want to fight him earlier. So he was trying to right his wrong the whole time. And then Golden Boy said, hey, we're trying to... Canelo's about to fight Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. So if you go ahead and fight Billy Joe Saunders, we have investors that are ready to promote you versus Canelo immediately after. So if you fight Billy Joe Saunders, you could kiss the Canelo fight goodbye because that doesn't give us enough time to promote. So once again, they waited. Then Canelo wants to, he has a, a tough draw with Golovkin. I'm giving you guys the whole timeline just so you could see. Canelo has a draw with Golovkin. I went to that fight too, covered that fight as media. Has a tough fight in a draw. Some people thought Golovkin won. Um, had a draw with Canelo. Then Canelo doesn't come back the remainder of the year. This was September of last year. And he says, I want to fight on the Mexican dates. Floyd's gone. Give me the Mexican dates. I'm Mexican. Give me the Mexican dates, which is next May and September. All the while, Golovkin didn't take any fights in between. He didn't take a tune-up, Spike O'Sullivan. He didn't try to unify with Billy Joe Saunders. He waited. Wait, wait, wait. Wait for Golden Boy. Wait for Canelo. Then you guys negotiate. Things go well. You make the rematch. It's announced. Boom. Canelo fails a drug test. So, yeah, I blame Golovkin because he, he's played the waiting game and chasing Canelo when he could have been undisputed by now. He could have realistically... He had enough belts. Um, I think he had all the belts since Canelo vacated in September 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he had all the belts. I mean, except for Daniel Jacobs' version of the belt, but he had the real WBA super belt. Danny Jacobs was a consolidation. Danny Jacobs had the WBA regular belt. So he pretty much has had been sitting on all the belts, minus Billy Joe Saunders' belt. But he chose to keep waiting and keep waiting. Now you wait for this man. And he fails a drug test, which is not your fault, but you wait, wait, wait. And now you're in this predicament where you're scrambling, trying to find an opponent. You and Billy Joe Saunders were in negotiations, you and Frank Warren, but you bowed out trying to pursue the money fight, the Canelo fight, the rematch. And then now it's just looking bad because Team Golovkin and they're, they're trying to spin it like Golovkin doesn't have options. Listen, as far as saying Golovkin is currently the most avoided man in boxing, that is done that is done for because even on late notice you have multiple guys stepping up saying pick me pick me pick me gilberto zuda ramirez his promoter says they want that work that's at 168 though um you have guys like jamal charlo who says i've never even been contacted about fighting golovkin but he's been screaming that he wants to fight golovkin right then you have uh demetrius boo boo andre u.s olympian you have Lou DiBella and Dervinchenko, who's Golovkin's mandatory at middleweight since he knocked out Toriano Johnson, and he's down to fight, and Lou is really pushing. And although you have all these people raising their hands saying, I'll fight Golovkin short notice, even Andre said, I'll fight him right-handed only, even though he's a southpaw, they're picking or trying, attempting to pick Gary Spike O'Sullivan, Jaime Munguia, and then guys like Vanis Matarosin, who's a 54-pounder and been very inactive. He, I don't think he's with Al Haim anymore, had had a grudge or whatever with him. So he ain't, nobody's been fucking with him. He ain't had no fights since probably the Edis Landi Lada rematch, which is a fight that I covered in, I think it was July. I remember it was the summer because I was in Vegas. I think summer 2016. So he's been highly in inactive. If he has fought since the Edis Landi Lada fight, I haven't seen it. I don't remember him coming back. You know what I mean? And now you're scrambling trying to get an opponent. All this because you chose to wait for, for Canelo and in multiple different time frames, even before the Clint Buterall shit. So it's just a bad look. And now the May 5th might get canceled altogether. So you just wasted all your time, had a fake training camp. And the reason I say fake is because if you don't get the fight, then what was the point of training? You know what I mean? But initially this stems from Canelo and what he had in his body. But even still, Golovkin had options. It's just they don't seem that they want to take those options. They don't want to fight Andre. They don't want to fight Dervinchenko. You know what I mean? And they know the public won't buy certain fights. Other fights aren't getting approved. To me, it seems like Team Golovkin wants to stay safe because they anticipate being able to, to rematch Canelo later in the year. That seems like to be the game plan. That's why you want to fight a Gary Spike O'Sullivan. The only issue is you're you're going to be doing a disservice to your fans because that level of competition is a regression 
because they were just you got to keep in mind they were talking about Golovkin fighting Canelo in the rematch and on the undercard David Lemieux versus Gary Spike O'Sullivan so to see Spike O'Sullivan go from David Lemieux who's coming off an embarrassing loss to Billy Joe Saunders to possibly fighting the best middleweight in the world Triple G it's not really a good look so I hope this fight does get canceled because if again I've said it before if you don't have proper time to promote this fight you don't have the proper time to get a solid opponent that poses some type of potential risk or threat to your style then it's just a wasting everyone's time you're just gonna have people buying tickets and we already know the outcome and Golovkin has had a lot of fights like that where we knew these guys Adama and Willie Monroe and guys coming up from 54 and the shit we knew those guys couldn't beat him Martin Murray who's never won a title in really any of his fights we knew those guys couldn't beat him so unfortunate Canelo started this but like I said there's blame that has to be shed on the team Golovkin side in my view because they spent and wasted all this energy chasing one man I, I told you I use this exact analogy this exact example Amir Khan Amir Khan chasing Floyd oh I, I oh my speed I think I can beat Floyd and he's chasing Floyd chasing Pacquiao has not had a chance to fight either meanwhile Conor McGregor got a shot at Floyd meanwhile um Pacquiao just fought Jeff Horn. You know what I mean? He got an opportunity. Mayweather fought against Maidana twice. And Amir Khan spent all his time chasing Floyd and calling him out and basically begging for the fight. And still, he hasn't even got it. So, I don't recommend anyone stagnate their own career like to the point where they're not fighting as frequently as they need to. Amir Khan ain't fought since like 2015. He's about to fight against Phil Greco, but doesn't make sense and then when Amir Khan finally did get a big fight with Canelo he got knocked out in it you know what I mean for his trouble chasing a big fight let me know your thoughts drop in the comment section make sure you smash the like button as always hate comment and subscribe tell next video's ego signing off so if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video much more to come thank you guys for your support boxing ego the future of boxing